CASA has many missions. This is one of them, and we contribute nutrition to four or five hundred families throughout Madison County, not just Huntsville. Uh, but we also build ramps for the homebound with wheelchairs, uh, that type of thing. Anyone who's bed bound under over 40 and homebound over 60 can be helped. We also have a program called Temps, where we come in and attempt to weatherize and help people get their windows covered with plastic to cut down on drafts and keep the houses as warm as possible, fix major rotting issues. The other thing we do is help people with uh, grab bars in the bathrooms and things like that. So anything we can do to help people age in place is essentially what CASA's mission is. We're one of many different things that CASA does and we are volunteer only here. Um, we have a core of four or five folks who come really often. Occasionally we'll get a big group in, but yeah, we run pretty much year round. We'll take off the 15th of December. We'll come back about the 15th of January to pick the harvest back up. We'll start planting the third week of February and we just keep going. We have something goes in the ground here every two weeks. And uh, we just, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, if it doesn't, we figure we've made compost and we need a lot of that anyway. So, we, this garden has been here since 2001. This may be the largest continuous community garden in the state. We're not really sure. But this thing is 21 to 23 years old. It was actually off Old Madison Pike. And then when they built Research Park and widened that all through there, Madison Boulevard or whatever that road is, the Casa Garden had to be moved in the city moved us here and so uh, we have been here since 01 continuously we were able to have a grant to purchase this and it's just over time things get added uh, we'll show you something in a little while that we think is just really really cool that is helping cut down on some of the issues with volunteers and high fuel prices we don't get as many volunteers to deliver the food anymore so now we're trying to aggregate more. We have what we call a cool bot, where we have made for less than $2,200 the equivalent of a seven, dollars $8,000 piece of equipment to help us hold the harvest for up to a week, that kind of thing. So we use your donations well, and we would be thrilled to have any, either your time or your money if you feel so inclined. You certainly don't have to, but <laughs> you need to ask while you're here. These are fairly new beds. These were built last year. This is a bunch of them called the Bermuda Sweet. And each little onion will become five to eight onions. Uh, we started another one over there. These have been in the ground three weeks. They're very, really, very really happy here. So, uh, well, Nicole gave us some weeks last year, but these we actually pull and onions, if you're growing onions, whether it's these or others, one of the things we've learned is if you're taking and harvesting the bulb and that first part of the stalk, don't throw the other part away. Either crush it up, freeze it if you don't need it right then, put it away, and then you can use it to make a concentrate as a pest control. You know, just putting it in a couple ounces of water, that concentrate. And what we do is we'll take and cut the stems off and walk down these rows and just drop pieces of onion heads or the stalks. Pests don't like that. So it's just any little day, it lasts about 10 days, but that's 10 days we don't have to spray anything. 